All right, we're going to do number five from the uh, 2010 BC exam, and uh, it is a differential equation problem. Um, so the first part is Euler's method, so we set up our table, and let's look at what we're given. So we're told that, well, we're actually told f of 1 is 0, and we're asked to approximate f of 0, which means that delta x must be uh, actually a negative step size, because we're going to the left instead of to the right. Um, so delta x is negative 1 half, because we need equal step sizes. We know f of 1 is 0, and dy dx is given as 1 minus y. Um, so I'm going to fill in uh, the x column here. So it starts at 1, and then I, I step once, and I get to 1 half, because I subtracted uh, 1 half, and then I do it again to get to 0. Um, and then I know that the initial y value is 0. So uh, let's calculate delta y. Uh, first thing I always do is put in the delta x, because that's the number one thing people forget and then evaluate, and we get this. Um, we combine these two values to get our new estimate of y, and we do it again. So that negative one-half is actually the delta x, and then one minus the quantity negative one-half, that gives me negative three-fourths, and then I combine these two values to get my new estimate, and so that is my estimate of f of zero. Um, all right, so that's part A. Um, Euler's method, you always want to use the table, Write it down. Don't ever forget to use uh, the delta x. All right, B, we got to evaluate a limit. Um, it's kind of a neat problem. It, it ends up a L'Hopital's problem because, uh, I mean, right now we have to evaluate, try to evaluate it. You'd have f of 1 over, um, you know, 1 minus 1. So since f of x is continuous, um, we know that f of 1 is 0. We can just substitute it in. So we get an indeterminate form, 0 over 0. So we're going to use L'Hopital's. All right, so that limit that we're given is actually equal to this limit, provided that this limit exists. Um, and this one does. So we've already calculated that f prime of 1 is dy dx at the point 1, 0, which is 1. So our limit overall becomes 1 third. And that's all there is to that. Uh, the next thing we need to do is find a particular solution. And what I'm going to do is, anytime I need to integrate uh, like a 1 minus y, I like to have the coefficient of y be positive. Um, so what I'm going to do is rewrite this really quickly as negative the quantity y minus 1. Uh, I do that for two reasons. One, you don't have to worry about screwing up the u substitution on the y side. Uh, you frequently get a natural log there, and then a lot of people forget the negative natural log, blah, blah, blah. And also, uh, like right now, if you kind of cross multiply it, which is I think what a lot of people think you're doing here, uh, there's kind of, there'd be nothing left in some people's mind for dx, but in this case, there's a negative 1 dx. Um, so that's why I do it. And now I'm going to integrate both. So I get a uh, natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1, and then equals negative x and plus c. Don't forget the plus c. I always put it with the independent variable. Um, so that gives me this. So with the Whenever I have the natural log, I like to exponentiate before solving for c because that allows me to, um, the value of c will let me not worry about those absolute values, uh, which is really nice because you can get kind of bogged down in that. So now I need to find the value of c. So I know these two things. I'm going to substitute in. And uh, c is kind of ugly here. So let's rearrange a little bit. And then that gives us C is negative 1 over e to the negative 1, or just negative e. So now I'm ready to write my particular solution. So I could write this, 1, and then literally just replace c with negative e. So minus e times e to the negative x, or if you're a little happier with it, you can uh, clean up that exponent to get this. Um, that's the entire problem, and uh, I hope this was helpful. Good luck.